Hello, friends. Hello. Welcome back to the Comcast. I am Ryan, your host, and I'm here with Loose Skin himself, Cody. What's up, Cody? What's up, guys? Half Met the Candle here. How's everybody doing? I hope you guys had a great week this week. Um, I know I've had a good week, like always. Uh, you know, just doing that work grind every day. Um, just some working on the apartment again still uh, with Tracy. Um, just working on getting that done. Uh, took the took took check stubs and everything there today, and got the lease agreement. So we're going to be working on that. So hopefully we'll get it soon because they only got one left, and really hoping we get it. So uh, did they just start selling out of them or something? Well, she told me I called her earlier this. I called the lady, the receptionist earlier this week, and she told me that they had. Multiple. They told me that they they had uh, the only ones they had left were this certain kind, mm-hmm. and it's the one we wanted. Well, I said okay, so I, I was going to go there today, which that was this is you know Saturday the what the, what is the date Saturday the twenty ninth. So Saturday June 29th is the date today, and I called her earlier this week, so it had been about a week. Um, since I had called her, and when I went over there, she said we that they only had one apartment that left that we wanted hmm. in our price range. Because everything's about price range. Because, I mean, we're not going to pay for something we don't need. Uh, so, she said, she basically told me that uh, she was going to give us the lease agreement today. Because it's kind of in a hurry, and we want it. And I don't want to spend another... Three months till October when my this lease runs out. Looking for uh, looking for apartments. So I I don't I hate looking for apartments. Uh, I hate looking around. I'm sure people that are listening agree with me. I just I, I just hate shopping around for shit like that. And I don't want to spend the next three four months looking for one. So if we could get this one now, it'd be perfect. And uh, everybody hates moving because it's a pain in the ass. But with them them places, once somebody moves out of them or whatever, well, since it's you know. School's over and all that, and I say they ran out to a bunch of people, but um, they they don't want them to be empty because they're not making money off an empty room, an empty apartment. So they try to get them to su- filled back in as soon as they can. No, well, th- yeah, well, this this what the website said it was available in September, mid September, which is perfect because my lease ends the first of October, and that'd be perfect for us to move in. But I assume it's probably empty now, to be honest with you. Probably. Um, but that's when the students start coming back to the town that I live in. So they start. And I don't even back. know if they rent them out to students. I like I, f- I don't think they do. Um, Tracy's grandma said that they do. That's a big student place, and all the people I know, since they only have one left, and it's July, I don't think it's students in there because students gonna stay year round. Um, so, Some do, but no, no, not no in general. No. Uh, so we're just just working on that, everybody, and. Hopefully we get it. Uh, we just I'll keep you everybody posted just because I, I I but time's ticking and honestly four months when you think about it isn't isn't that long. Uh, some people might think it is, but in a, in a place where you have a in a town where everything just keeps getting more and more expensive every fucking year, and I hate it. Why does everything have to keep getting more and more expensive every year? The cost of living doesn't go up. It's because you live in a city. Right, and I mean, it's a college town, and either even though the apartments and the places don't change, they still raise the rent at least by fifty bucks every year. Where are things going? They they build in new restaurants and new everything there every you know every year, so it'll eventually go up. Like I was I was listening to a podcast and they were saying that they lived in San Francisco and he's had the person's had this apartment for ten years. And he said it went up like five hundred or what was it? It was yeah, it was like five hundred dollars over that past ten years. See, that's fucking ridiculous. I think, I and, and that's that's also the cost of living too. So hopefully, the, your cost of living um, pay at work goes up with that, or you get raises in, to compensate for that because yeah. five hundred dollars is a large amount. And even though that that's California and everything is a lot more expensive out there, especially in San Francisco. Which is like one of the most expensive places to live in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, Although the most homeless. But and that's here, why. In, okay. yeah. But here in here in uh, Central Indiana, it's 
it's it's not it's not near as expensive, but it's also but it, we also don't get the cost of living raises like no. uh, someplace in California might get or uh, something like that. And the economy in the city that I live in, uh, it since it's a, a growing college town, it just it's just getting a little bit ridiculous. And like their the actual rent is based off of. Uh, this is going to be the 2019 to 2020 rent price. And I asked her, I said, is that going to go up? She said, it's, it's subject to change, which is probably going to go up by like 50 bucks, probably. which is fucking ridiculous. And, you know, the next year after that is going to go up by 50 bucks more. And I just, I just don't, I, I don't agree with it because I feel like if they're, if they're going to be raising everything, they should do like a citywide rate increase which that's fucking unrealistic yeah completely well i just saw the local mcdonald's down the road you can they're hiring at nine dollars an hour with a hundred dollar sign-on bonus so oh like, shit everybody go to mcdonald's you get yeah. that hundred bucks son that's a hundred mcdoubles that's a gram of meth you can buy that that's a hundred a gram oh fuck no dude meth is cheap that's why people smoke it Meth is cheap as shit. I, I just thought it was funny. It was like now hiring, like they have a huge fucking sign. It's a big sign, and it's like colorful letters and stuff. And it says now hiring nine dollars an hour with hundred dollar sign on bonus. Huh. So in case you lose your job, you can go to McDonald's, I guess. Um, meth here, meth here, where we're from, is cheap as shit. You can either buy a six pack of beer or just a bowl of meth. It's the same price. I've never bought it, so I don't know. I've never bought it either. I'm just saying. I'm just talking out my ass. I really don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, but that's been me this week, just working, uh, trying to stay healthy, uh, just working out. I started a new workout regimen. Um, I th- that's just doing that. Um, something new. I'm getting bored of just lifting weights, uh, so I started doing kettlebells, and I do. Uh, at least five of those a week, five kettlebell workouts a week, and I take walks and other. I do other stuff like that, but mainly for my weight training and my strength training and uh, stuff like that is uh, just kettlebell workouts, which I fucking love kettlebells. Um, if nobody's ever really tried kettlebell workouts, it's great. It's like a it's a less stress it's a less stressful uh, movement on your body. It's more for uh, everyday use, uh, like you know, bending down and picking up heavy objects, stuff like that. It's it's more for a full body, natural movement is uh, what kettlebells are used for. The only bad thing with those is if you don't have the form right, you can fuck up your oh, back. And yeah, it took, me, it took me a long time to get my form right. I had to watch videos and watch how um, experts did it and trainers, how they did it. And I, I just, I, I had to, I, kept, I didn't want to hurt myself because I, I was doing kettlebell swings one time and I felt myself bend down too low to throw the kettlebell between my legs and I felt my back pop and it, it hurt and it, it laid me up for at least two days because I just went, I just didn't have the form down right. And I was being a little too rambunctious. I thought I was, uh, I thought I was a little too strong for what I really yeah. am. And, uh, it wasn't even that heavy of a kettlebell either. So I've just been doing that and I usually rotate every, like every quarter. So I do three months so I do 12 weeks of one type of exercise and then I'll change it up because it keeps the body just doing different things and uh, just basically that's what I've been doing. So changing that up, uh, apartment, working, that's pretty much all I've been doing. Just that just that regular weekly grind. Uh, I know uh, a lot of you people, this is just that same thing and uh, we're happy that you download this to uh, listen to us each week. To, uh, Basically, take an hour of your time away. Yeah, but we know you're not doing anything just like us. So <laughs> I, I'm doing stuff. I do stuff. I know, but not for an hour. Right. I mean, you have an hour where you can just bullshit and listen to something. But yeah, right. we appreciate you guys downloading this podcast. We definitely had a huge spike from Sam Bob being on um, the last episode. I don't know if it, I know he uh, plugged it on his social media and stuff, but I think we had like um, one of the highest downloads since like the second episode i think we had like 38 downloads on the second episode and his got 32 33 something like that which this 38 downloads on the second episode is just people 
you know, just like, oh, what's this? And listening to it. Well, because the first one was only 15 minutes of the introduction. That, that, that still has 28. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then the second one... And then the second one was an actual hour, and I was on there. So yeah. I think I, I think it was just people checking out. So how many are we up to now? Mm, I don't even know. Like 131 total. 131 total? I thought Sorry. it was more than that. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. I'm not worried about it right now. Okay. Um. But, so, so uh, yeah, but just thanks to Sam Bob. He got us a lot of downloads, and he plugged it on his social media. So And he has a lot of friends and stuff like that. So I'd say they listen to it, and we appreciate it. And uh, still haven't gotten any emails on the uh, Gmail yet, so still waiting for somebody to do that. A lady that we work with actually told me uh, she actually uh, listens to the episode each week. Uh, shout out to Wendy. I know you're listening. Uh and she told me, she said, I, I want to I, I wanna send an email really bad. I said, just send one. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. I it's said, not just like- send one. She's like, I will eventually. I just don't know what I'm going to say. I said, S- anything. I said, send anything. Just ask a stupid question. Right. It doesn't matter. I mean, but uh, I, I like doing this. I like coming here and doing this every week. Uh, I like, I, I, was, I would say I like talking to Ryan, but he doesn't talk much. So it's just mainly a one-sided conversation. If I get something interesting to talk about, I can talk about it. But right. um, I haven't done anything this week. Uh, just been hanging out. Uh, when we were in Florida, we went and saw our sister and our nieces hung out. And then they just come down uh, this uh, week. They came up. Uh, what have you. Um, anyway, they came up from Florida and they were visiting and our sister was sick so she stayed home but i got to saw our nieces and uh i went and saw them and they were at my dad's house and i went and hung out and we were eating dinner and my dad who's how old is dad 59 59 59 has a an amazon alexa i don't even have one of those things and he has one in his house and the girls saw it. They're 8 and 10. And I, they just looked at it and they're like, is that an Amazon Alexa? <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's what it looks like. And they said, Alexa, play Old Town Road. <laughs> <laughs> Old Town Road by Lil Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus. Remix. Doo-doo. And then it just starts playing. And they start dancing. And I got a video of it and stuff. It's hilarious. I hate that um, song. I hate that song. I saw on the news that... It's still on the. T- it's still number one on the top one hundred songs. Of course, it's fucking gonna be. I not, mean, it's not country either. It's just like the top one hundred songs. I mean, it may be country. I don't know. But, but honestly, where the fuck did Billy Ray Cyrus go? Like, where did he? Where did he go? He's, he's just, been hanging out. I mean, he's still, he produced. He produced. He produced uh, Miley Cyrus, and he's still a producer. That's how he makes his money. He produces Miley he pr- Cyrus. He stuff. produces her songs. He produces everybody's songs. I bet he like came in Miley Cyrus's mom and then made Miley Cyrus. He produced Miley Cyrus and then he just like dropped off the map. Well, no, because he also writes songs too. I mean, he got famous from Achy Breaky Heart and that's about it. But then he disappeared and then came back with Miley and he still likes write songs. Like that's Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton, he would just write songs and then they're like, oh, you, uh, you know, you can sing. You're a good singer. And then like, oh, can you play guitar? And he's like, oh, a little bit. Well, then he learned how to play. And then now he's doing it on his own. And every song that he comes out with now is shit that he wrote 10 years ago. Now, that's a good artist, Chris Stapleton. I mean, he hasn't wrote any new songs. He just pulls it out of a library because he owns all of it already. So yeah. he just pulls it. Or if he doesn't, then he buys it from him. And then he comes out with it. Right. Um. But yeah, that Old Town Row song I saw where they, it was in the news that Taylor Swift, she, you know, Taylor Swift, she always produces new songs. She travels like 300 days out of the year or something like that. And she got beat out for the second week in a row by that song for number one. She got her both two brand new songs got second place to that (laughs) Old Town Road. I bet she's pissed. Um, Uh, That's somebody, that's somebody who got way bigger than they ever could imagine by going pop. Who? Taylor Swift. I guess she no she was her new big. songs aren't pop now she just did that one album no she no no they are she's all pop now she doesn't oh, do co- yeah she doesn't do country music anymore she is a pop artist um I when don't think when so. she, no she was big in country but when she turned pop she's bigger than ever before yeah she she's bigger than she ever could have imagined and she was a great writer uh she, she could write songs better than anybody but she's a uh, she's just not a very good. 
singer. I just don't think she's that good. She's 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 good, but she's not like awesome, spectacular. But she's a way better pop artist than she is a country artist, to be honest with you. Um, so, but she's she's doing work too. She's Taylor Swift's off the fucking charts, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I watched that. Have you ever watched the music video for the Old Town Road song? Yeah, it's not very. It, it's kind of. Did you see Chris Rock's in it? Yeah, I mean he makes jokes. He's like, <laughs> he's like, man, look, like, look at that boy ride that horse, like a speeding bullet, faster than a Maserati, and all. He just starts yeah, yeah. saying stupid things. He just keeps going and going and going. He's like, man. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. But uh, you want to get into the beer of the week? Yeah. Well, it's time for the beer of the week, guys. Oh my God! It's the beer of the week. Time to get drunk. This week's beer of the week is the CPA, which is stands for the Creamy Peach Ale, and they combined an Imperial Golden Ale with lactose and peaches. And this is by Taxman Brewing Co. from Bargersville, Indiana. Uh, the CPA uh, accounts for it all. This Imperial Golden Ale excels in refreshment. Featuring sweet, ripe peach notes with a creamy, rich body and smooth finish. A certified original that accounts for everything. The CPA is audit that can be what it sometimes be. Uh, <laughs> You're not making sense. <laughs> I can't do you. I can't do you. Can't do you. <laughs> the CPA is audit. It can be in what can sometimes be a cruel world. Sound like our cousin reading last night. That's literally that's literally what it fucking says. I should have just left that part out. So, um... <laughs> anyway, Taxman. So, so Taxman Brewing Co., I love all of their beers. I've had multiple of them. It doesn't have the ABV on here, which is weird because... I figured they wanted it to be a mystery, but the can's fucking cool as shit. Did, did any of them have it? Like, yeah, they always have it, but for some reason, this one just doesn't. And it looks like I, they just like wrote it on there the way they have it set up. They want it to be a mystery. No, it was actually printed on there, but they do have the IBU on there, which that has nothing. Well, to do it's with a the seasonal alcohol. thing. They probably just don't give a shit. As long as it's in like a certain standard right. of stuff, then I'd say that's. I mean, it's not going to be like nine percent or something. Then it'd be like they could only. Well, they could only sell it in a four pack for one. Um, because high percentage stuff, they can only sell in four packs. Well, honestly, um, it, honestly, even though it's about six percent alcohol, this is probably about six percent alcohol. To be it's honest, it's in between with you. four and six because it's an ale and it's a fruity ale. It's probably yeah, it's probably it's probably about five and a half to six percent alcohol. It's great um, for summertime, honestly, since it's hot out here in Indiana. It's about ninety degrees and it's midday. Yeah, it, well, it's like eighty six with like a feels like 90 so it's pretty humid um but so it's great for drinking in the summertime it's light fruity rich everything the can says uh so taxman brewing co i love all your beers they're all belgium inspired so a lot of the beers they have are double ales uh which is a belgium style ale and they go all the way from the double triple quadruple and the quadruple is outrageous it's like Nine, eleven percent alcohol. Not mm. I, somewhere, some outrageous fucking amount. It gets you fucking drunk, bad, fast. But Belgium inspired. It's American crafted. Uh, declare yourself is the slogan. A tax man, and they got an awesome logo. I love their logo. It's a skeleton head with a bow tie and a top hat. And if you go to any uh, tap room or something like that, and they have really they're in little, Indiana, aren't they? Yeah, it's uh, Barkersville, Indiana, and I really want to go take a tour of the brewery. Well, I know they're everywhere around here, so yeah, everywhere ever, sells them. In they have Indiana. a really cool tap handle. It's just a, a black pillar, and it's just got the skeleton with the top hat sitting on top of it. Really mm-hmm. cool, really cool. So, shout out Taxman Brewing Co. Um, I love all your beers. I've been drinking you guys for years. Um, it, you guys are great. So, uh, that's the beer of the week, guys. Um, so let's get in to something else. Well, what do you want to get into, Ryan? Well, I was going to say that uh, I started TikTok. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, Jesus. No, I have, you fucking didn't. Uh, I have, uh, I just put up one video just to see how it worked. It's of the, our mascot, Bo, sleeping um, on the couch. And I have like a cute, like, pet theme song or what have you 
Um, and I just started looking up videos and stuff like that. And it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> a lot of stuff is really funny and a lot of stuff is stupid. Um, and probably 60% of the videos I saw were just kids. I mean, they're younger than me, like 18, 19, and they drive all these nice ass cars and have this blonde wavy bullshit hair and both their ears pierced and all this nonsense. But I don't know. I started that and it's pretty interesting. I, ne I never even knew what it was for. Um, it's just like a new social media thing for millennials to well, it's not that new. make. Well, it's kind of new. No, not really. It's been out for about a year. But anyway, it's just something new for millennials to make money and get likes and all this bullshit. Did you, did you start a TikTok account because Sam Bob has one? No, I started a TikTok because I l heard it on another podcast. And I was like, well, I'm just going to see what it is. So I downloaded it and started watching stuff. And a lot of it made me look re laugh really hard. So I was like, I'm going to do one and see how it is. So I'm on there. I may upload to it or not. It's the same as my Instagram, come 7 ryan um, you can find me on there, and it'd probably just be like my Instagram. I hardly upload on Instagram. If it is, it's dogs or food or um, that's about it. Can't be taking pictures of my wiener because it's non-existent. Um, but, yeah. So I started TikTok, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot uh, something else that happened this week uh, with me. Uh, uh, Sam, Bob, uh, Sam Bob's sister... Uh, which is, uh, what's her name? Uh, don't, don't get, we'll not give her name out. We'll oh, not okay. give her out, but, uh, she is at Tripping Bunnies or is it, hold on. It's, uh, Trippin, Trippin Bunnies, Trippin Bunnies, T-R-I-P-P-I-N. Yeah. She's at Trippin Bunnies at, uh, on Inst or Trippin Bunny, sorry. Trippin Bunny on Instagram and, uh, her actual artist name is Trip, uh, Trippin Bunnies. So... Sam, uh, Sam Bob's sister, uh, she got the, the cover art done for our album, and if you ask me, it's fucking dope. It is pretty cool. It is awesome. It's a, uh, basically, she did it uh, like a wanted poster with uh, the old school paper background, and she has basically a mug shot of both of us side by side uh, with our names above them, and uh, the uh, tap room where we did it at, the Hoppy Wobbles um, picture on each side. Of the one a poster, and we're both holding signs um, that say "Hoppy Wobbles," uh, "Hoppy Wobbles Pub," and it has both of our our code names, Shrimp Dick and Babylonie. And that's is, the name of the album. Which is the name of the album, and she drew us as cartoon characters, and it's fucking awesome. She did a great job. So shout out to Ad Trip and Bunnies on Insta or on Twitter. Sorry, on Twitter. Uh, Sam Bob Patrick's sister. You look like a just a pale skin turtle. Yeah, I look like literally because I, like because you don't have I a have, nose, you just have nose right, holes. Because I have a bald head, and she asked if I wanted she wanted to do my chin strap. I said, yeah, give me some facial hair so I don't look like a fucking baby. And uh, but she did a great fucking job. Uh, awesome. Sam Bob literally looks just like himself. Yeah, and she gave me giant fucking hands. Do you see that? Well, he has giant hands too, but not as big. No, mine are, my hands are fucking huge, and your shoulders are so, wide. So we're kind of like an anime, like an anime character. We literally look like anime characters. But she did a great fucking job. Uh, so shout out to Ad Trip and Bunnies on Twitter. I uh, like how much detail she put into the height too, because yeah, she on asks yours, us, yeah, she asks us our height. Yeah, yeah, five seven, and his is five nine, and she yeah. like. Calculated for that. It's actually is, I told her five seven and a half, so she put cool. like the very tip of my head. I just don't get the uh, the apostrophe. What does that mean? I think it's, I'm supposed it's to be like, saying because, like, I'm, <gasps> because I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's like <gasps> I don't know. And she took she took um she took that picture from a picture that I had on my Facebook of me doing stand up and basically rendered it to and like yeah a, rendered it to that because it's the same green shirt that I wear on there yeah and uh, so I I, lo I actually love the detail that she did with it it's great um, it is cool maybe she could make something for the podcast yeah that'd be cool too uh, I mean she's she actually she, I think uh, she only charged us like 40 bucks to do it and which was well, awesome well I'd give her more than that if she did yeah I would give her I would definitely give her more than that she, uh, this is great work so uh, thank you again. Now, does she draw this by hand or like on the computer? Uh, I think she drew it. She drew a concept of it by hand and then she did it on the computer herself. Hmm. But she usually does stuff uh, both freehand and on the computer. But uh, I like it. It's cool. Yeah, it's it's fucking awesome. Great work. So uh, we're, we're still working on the editing process of the album. So we'll definitely keep you guys posted. And 
hopefully we'll have Sandball back on here uh, here soon uh, when the album is ready for release. And uh, so that we can have another great episode with him and we'll announce the release of the album. And it'll be fucking great. So uh, shout out again to Sandball Sister. Thank you so much. The fucking cover art is great. I hope all of you like it. Um, and I've shared it on my, fa- I've shared it on, uh, I've shared it on my Facebook, but I'll go ahead and I'll share it on Instagram too. Uh, just in case anybody wants to follow me, the listens here and that's at Cody Cummings official. So if you want to follow me on that, I'll go ahead and post it after the episode. So you guys can check out the cover art. Uh, it'll be fucking awesome. And maybe we'll get a teaser and stuff for you guys together or something, something like that. We'll work something out. Yeah. But that's another thing that's also happened this week. So I uh, definitely super excited about that too. Yeah, it's really cool. I remember seeing it, and I just remember the first thing I picked out was, I was like, Cody just looks like a giant ninja turtle, like his head, because you just have no, you have, excuse me, no nose, but you just have two nostril holes. Yeah, I she, when she gave me the concept drawing of it before it was colored in, it had like a little thing on it, and I thought she was getting my little fucking chicken pot thing on my nose, and uh-huh. I was like. Don't put that, my little circle thing right there on the tip of my nose. See it? I think it's sure. I, oh, anyway, <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, she literally, like, Sam Bob has a fucking nose, and I don't have a nose at all. Like, she just gave me, like, a little, like, a little, nit, like, a little meh on my fucking nose. Yeah. And I just got two holes in my face. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what makes me, I literally look like a turtle. So I literally look like, um, on Master of Disguise when he's in the Turtle Club because I have a green shirt on mm-hmm. and I'm bald. I literally look like what the fuck is his name? What is his name? Um, um it's uh, I don't remember. He's f- I mean, he's famous. It's uh, shit. Dana Carvey. Yeah, Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey. He's an amazing voice actor. Dana Carvey is fucking great. Um, he great actor. He's hilarious. Have you ever seen a stand up? Yeah. Fucking hilarious, Dana Carvey. Uh, but Master of Skies, I literally look like uh, the Turtle Club. He's been, like, out of the limelight, and he just does stand-up and, like, shows. and You can make a good living just doing... He uh, does voices. Every... That's, what, that's what I'm saying. You can make a good living just doing voice acting. Refill. Yeah, refill on my, on my creamy P-tail, the CPA. You got yeah. one left. I know. They only come in a four-pack, You're drinking them like fucking water. They're um, fucking good, man, and it's hot out today. It's fucking hot as shit in Indiana. Yeah, but we're inside in the AC, so, yeah. And still, it's, it's a good drink. Day drinking is my favorite, if anybody agrees with me. Day drinking is literally the funnest thing ever. Like, if you have something to do that day, um, like a craft beer festival or a barbecue or something like that, that you get involves, like, friends, family, food... Just something you can go out and have a good time, go shopping and like go to tastings and breweries and wineries, distilleries, stuff like that. Day drinking is literally my favorite. Yeah. It's my favorite thing to do. I fuck night drinking, going to bars. If I could have a nice Sunday, Saturday afternoon and literally just drink during the day and eat dinner and just chill out and rehydrate at night and go to bed and wake up Monday morning for work. That is my absolute favorite. Mm-hmm. I love nothing more than day. It is fun because <laughs> I just like it because if we'd go like like where you live, like to the bars and stuff or like something like that, and we would go stay at a bar for like two hours, drink, get like a half a buzz and then like walk to the next bar and everybody's just walking by normally, you know, on their everyday stuff. And we're yeah, walking there. by normal functioning people with a buzz in the yeah, middle of the day. And we're just sitting there laughing it's and stuff. It's fucking great. I remember, I remember I used to skip out on work some days and we would go to a tap room in the town that I live in. And I mean, they, they literally have uh, over 300 beers on tap and from all over the world. So we would literally go there at 11 o'clock when they open, drink till 2 and eat lunch and have a solid buzz. And we just walk around downtown, go to different places and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, shop or whatever. And walking around normal functioning people in the middle of a work day, like it's like a Wednesday. Yeah. So walking around normal functioning people in the middle of work day and you got a solid buzz and you're like maybe staggering a little bit. It's yeah. fucking great. This is fun as long as you're not like you're not driving with that and all that and getting in trouble and stuff. No. But like if you're walking and it's like a nice like fall like mid 60s with like a sweatshirt on and you're just yeah. walking around and it's like a perfect sunny 
day, and it's oh my god, it's which so is much literally fun. like St. Patrick's Day in a nutshell. Basically, yeah. Basically, yeah. Same. Well, it was, it was kind of warm this St. Patrick's Day. It, it was warm, but it was super fucking windy. Yeah, like the wind was cold as shit, and we had the jackets on. We literally almost I remember got. That. I, li- I literally almost got blown away by the wind. Yeah, and then you get like wind burnt and shit like that. Yeah, but uh, that's so day drinking is probably my favorite. If you, if anybody like, if anybody has a drinking story or anything you want to talk about, will you just fucking email us? No, yeah. like I mean, have, honestly, like. I don't want to do this for a year, and then somebody finally emails us. Just send, send, Wendy, Wendy from work, send a fucking email. Yeah, I, I I love your dad, Dave Thomas. He's great. But Wendy's Dave Thomas, Dave's double. What the Wendy? Wendy's. Oh yeah, I love your dad, Dave Thomas. Okay, shout out, shout out to Wendy. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I forget what I was gonna say. You fucking get it. Okay, okay, Dave. Okay. Uh, oh, anyway, yeah, Dave, I was Thomas, like, Dave Thomas is the founder. Of I, I know that now. Um, anyway, I was yeah, I was gonna say like we have plenty of drinking stories, and we'll get into them. Um, I don't know if we'll dive into them. We'll do it maybe next episode or something. When we'll have like a cert, we'll have like a straight topic where we can talk about like crazy shit that happened in college. I know you have because you went twice. So you have. Not not because you're dumb, but <laughs> it took me three years to get a two year degree. But, but like crazy, I'm not d- I'm not dumb, but I'm not smart either. Like crazy taser stories, and we have crazy crazy taser stories. From taser high stories. Yeah, you don't remember that time? I didn't get tased. No, you didn't get tased, but that one guy did. Remember? He was like, he was at your party. And, oh fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah he yeah. lives he lives here in town. I mean, now. you can tell it if you want to. Yeah, he lives here in town now. Uh, I'll tell that story here in a minute. Um... Well, actually, I'll just tell it now. I'll just tell it now. Yeah, that reminds me. Since you fucking brought it up. Uh, and also, that reminds me of a story uh, in high school at a high school party. I'll tell that one. You tell this one. Okay, okay. So, so when I was in college, uh, for the second time, right? For the second time, it was my, I just went back for one year. I took a year off and went back for my last year because I let alcohol get the best of me. And I was not very responsible. So my last year, I decided to be responsible and do my homework and all that other stuff. I believe. Don't get me wrong. I still partied every week. It's definitely still partying and drank every. But week. But you got your shit done. But I got first. my shit. I got my shit as soon as I got home from class. I did my homework and got it done. And I had a few roommates. And one of my roommates told me he said, "Dude, you're such a good student. I'm a terrible student." And I was like, dude, you have no fucking idea mm-hmm. how bad of a student I was my freshman year. I said, I would drink during class. I-, I would drink before class and do my homework drunk because I thought if I did my homework drunk and I took the test drunk, I would get good grades. Yeah. Like literally, like literally I would, I would do like I would, I had a night class that was from 730 to 930. And I would drink, but I didn't have a class for like four hours before that. So I would go home and drink for like a couple of those hours, get a good buzz, drive <laughs> the five blocks to campus. I mean, it's not that far. No, it's not that far. And it's just a rural street. So, you know, 10 miles an hour the whole way. Okay, maybe a little more than that. Well, it's but, like stop signs. So you go right, to block right. and stop. So I'll drive the five blocks to class. Go to class with a solid buzz. Come back and there'd be a party in my apartment. Yeah. So... And I thought that I would get good grades that way. I did pass, hmm. but uh, but so I, w- I was a terrible student those first two years. And so when I went back, I uh, the first the first two weeks of class, uh, we had never had a toga party before, and we're ready to start the fucking year. So we have a toga party, and we have no fucking idea what we're doing. So we just get sheets. From Walmart, mm-hmm. and I was fat as fuck, the heaviest I ever been, oh, almost the heaviest I'd ever been back then. So I had to buy a king size flat sheet to fit me because nothing else would fit me. Well, that's because it has a wrap around your body. Right, right, right. It has to wrap around your body. So I bought that, and we went somehow we wound up across the street at the neighbor's house partying with them. Mm-hmm. And we all went over there, got super drunk. And they all started heading back to, uh, right across the street to our house. Now, uh, a guy that I just met, which he actually lives in town now, and he works here in town, and I don't, I don't remember where he's from, but I had met him that year. 
he, him, and a bunch of other people were hanging out outside, right on the main in the main street. Yeah, that's what you don't do. The main street. We lived on the main street in Vincennes, Indiana, where I went to college at Vincennes University. And the main street that goes all the way through town, we lived on, and the front of our house faced that. And the house that we went to was right across the. We walked across no. the main street to get to, which is a no go because everybody. It's the busy street in town. Yeah. So we all start. They all start to come back, and I'm sitting there talking to all these all these guys and a couple of girls. Uh, on the on the front steps of this house, right on the sidewalk, and the, everybody's yelling at me. My roommates and stuff are yelling at me. Come on, Cody, let's go back. And they're on the porch across the street, and I was like, okay. And I'm super drunk. And as soon as I walk across the street and I start up the first flight of steps, all all these cops just swarm the fucking house well, from both sides. Yeah, and. I'm walking, I'm halfway up the steps, and I turn around, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I run up the steps, and we run inside, turn the lights off, and we all go to fucking bed. But before we do, I turn around, and I see everybody just scatter like fucking roaches in a Motel 6 when you turn the lights on. Yeah. Fucking terror. They just scattered. And one of the guys, he he ran around the other side of the house, and one of the cops tased him. One of the Vincent's cops tased him, because he's fat as fuck, and he's slow, so he's the slowest one. That's why he tased him. And we see him the next morning, and he he was cut up, and he had like a chunk of his hair missing off his head because he hit the fucking pavement, <laughs> and he's he had dirt all over him, and he just got out of jail the next. It was like eleven o'clock the next morning. Did he like sue them? Uh, no, but he got out of the case. He got out of the case because they didn't have to tase him. Because they can't fucking... They, not just can't, on a, yeah, they just shoot you with a taser because yeah, you're running? they shot him with a taser because he was running away, which was... They didn't have to do that. So... I mean, he didn't break any, like, really bad... He didn't... He wasn't running from the scene of a crime. No. So they just didn't have any right to tase him. No, it wasn't a crime. It was just He's a just party. a fucking kid. Yeah, it was just a party. So he got out of the case. He didn't have to do anything. He just spent a night in jail. So, <laughs> so yeah, he uh, they, he said the worst part was when they pulled out the barbs from his back. I bet he said that was. You terrible. have to have a paramedic do it because you can like yeah. need stitches and shit. But um, and we have plenty of more college stories, and we'll probably we'll do that some other episode where we'll just have like a, a solid episode and of college crazy fucking stories, and then. News topics at the end, but and then I'll I'll tell this this other taser story right now. I remember we were in high school, and I wasn't there. Were you there at that party? You weren't there, were you? You weren't there. No, at, no, no. I wasn't there. That's what I mean. Uh, mm-hmm. I just heard about it, but we had a, a friend um, we played football with, and he went to this house party, and. With this, you know, popular girl in high school, and the, she had a really nice house, and this house is full of kids. Well, it ended up getting busted, and the cops come in there, and the kid that we were with, that we played football with, he had ran upstairs in this room with this girl who had thrown this party, and she was just up there in the room doing something. I don't know what she was doing, and the cops uh, kicked in the door. And he was standing there, and the, he opened the window and was getting ready to jump out. And the cop said, freeze, and had the taser pulled out. And they're both, this girl and this dude are sitting in, standing in this room, like, with their arms up. And he's like, don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. He's freaking out. He doesn't want to get tased. And then he just, the cop gets distracted for something, and he just jumps out the window, goes out the window, and then he, the cop turns around, sees him jumping in the window, goes to tase him, and hits the girl instead of him. Yeah. And she just, like, she gets tased and, and falls she's to the ground. Going, gah, 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 gah. Yeah, and, he, <laughs> and he gets away, and nobody knows who he is, so he, he doesn't get, uh, you know, he doesn't get in trouble for it. But he just jumped out the window, and that cop turns back around and hits his girl with this taser instead of him. Anyway, I think she ended up, she, like, got out of it. 
and like maybe even started like even filed a suit and all this stuff with him because she wasn't doing anything. Yeah. She was just standing there. That's fucking hilarious. And it was an accidental taste and they ended up making t shirts in our high school for the rest of the year. This is no with taste. with a picture of this guy standing there with his arms up and a bullseye across him that says, Don't tase me, bro. Because yeah. those are the last words he said before that's he jumped fucking, out that window. That was fucking hilarious. Oh my god. That was no, I just remember hearing that fucking story. Do you mind? I died laughing. Yeah. Do you mind if we pause for a bathroom break? Yeah, we'll go ahead and pause. Bathroom break. And welcome back, everybody. Uh, we were supposed to take a piss break, and it ended up being a shit break. <laughs> Sorry, and guys. And so the room smells like shit now. So No, it doesn't. Yes, it fucking does. Really? Yeah, you were uh, soaking in it in there. Yeah, it was... Since it came out of your butt, it came in this room. Sorry, guys. We went to a, uh, a game night at our cousin's house last night, and Ryan made buffalo chicken sliders, and everybody had, like... Um, Cheese ball and cheese related. You ate like half a fucking cheese ball. I saw you. You had the bowl and you had a fork and you just like cut it in half and put it on your plate and then took another section and then put it on your plate. If you're ever if you're ever at a function with me and you make cheese ball, it's half gone. Yeah. I remember our cousin made a cheese ball at Christmas time that was shaped like a snowman. Like she made a big a big base and then a, a small, medium and medium then a small, and then a small one. And for you a just head. took the head off of it. I took the fucking head off, which is like the size of a baseball. Yeah, which is like <laughs> a quarter pound of cheese. And and they're like, I didn't get a picture of it yet. I was like, you should have fucking done it before people started eating because people are already cutting into it. Yeah, yeah I just took the fucking head. Yeah, if you ever make cheese ball around me, it's gone. Like it's literally gone. Like mom for my birthday just made me a giant cheese ball. I love cheese ball like that, and then I made like bacon cheddar ranch cream cheese uh, pinwheels and like a Southwest um, like ranch che- cheese dip. There, literally everything had fucking cheese in it. Bu- uh, buffalo chicken dip, mm-hmm. fucking everything had cheese in it. So besides cookies, and I don't usually eat like that. So I was shitting. My, I'm shitting my brains out today, guys. So so I had a little bit of a poop break, but I'm sure you guys understand. But um. Uh, so have you have you seen the uh, the new MG MGK song Machine Gun Kelly song? Nope. No. Uh, it's really fucking cool. It's uh, I think I'm okay. Uh, it's got uh, Machine Gun Kelly and it's featuring Gun Blood and Travis Barker, and it's literally like a rock song, and it's really fucking good. And I've never heard of Young Blood uh, until this song. Great fucking singer. He's an alternative rock singer from uh, the UK. Hmm. And he's really fucking good. Do you mind if we can we not play it at all? I wouldn't. Just you sure? Just in case. No, don't worry about it. They can look it up if they want to listen to it. Well, if you guys, so if you guys that haven't heard this song, it's called "I Think I'm Okay" by Machine Gun Kelly, and it's featuring Young Blood and Travis Barker. Which fucking Travis Barker, the best drummer of all time. I'm pretty sure. I mean, honestly, the drummer for Blink 182. Do you know who Travis Barker is? Nope. You know who Travis Barker is? Nope. Holy shit. Travis Barker, he's like the best drummer ever. Uh, he... I thought he was a rapper. No, Travis Barker, no. Travis Barker's a drummer. Um, he was on Joe Rogan a while back. But he's uh, the drummer for Blink-182. He, uh, he's one of the best drummers ever. Uh, great. He had a great interview on... Um, he had a great interview on Joe Rogan. And, yeah, Travis Barker, he's fucking legit. Hmm. Legit drummer. You sure we can't play just, like, ten seconds of No, it? I don't want to play it. But, uh, actually, Machine Gun Kelly in the video, he plays guitar for the first part of it. And he's actually pretty good at playing guitar, to be honest with you. Um, I'll do, I'll look up uh, Youngblood. I, I actually, I... Uh, it's right there. Yeah, I've been obsessed with... Because I looked him up earlier until my recents. But Youngblood, he's... Uh, an alternative uh, alternative rock singer from the UK. He's got a great voice. He looks like a vampire, mm-hmm. but he's got a great fucking voice. Um, and uh, he's in uh, Eleven Minutes. The song with he has a song called Eleven Minutes with Halsey, and Halsey's fucking killing it too. But so that's Young Blood, and then we all know fucking Machine Gun Kelly. I don't follow none of that stuff. But yeah, I, uh, Tracy actually introduced me to the song. But uh, yeah, so I would if you guys haven't heard that song, give it a listen. If you like rock slash rap, or uh, if you're if you're into 
um, alternative rock, you'll probably like it. Or if you, you're a fan of any one of these artists, go ahead and check it out. Because it's a great fucking song. It really fucking gets it. I was actually, I caught myself working out to it at the gym. Like, I just kept putting it on repeat. Great. It was a great fucking song. All right. Moving on. Moving on. All right, guys. Uh, we got Would You Rather. Woo! All right, Ryan. In this segment of Would You Rather on the Comcast. Would you rather be able to marry your celebrity crush, which, which who is your celebrity crush? Uh, what's her name? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know your fucking celebrity crush? No, it, it was um, Jessica, Alba? Jessica Alba, but she's old now. So, um, my mine's just mine's Jennifer Aniston, and she's like fifty two. Megan Fox is still hot, but she has toe thumbs. Do you even have a celebrity crush? No. Nah. So this is irrelevant. Yeah. What the fuck? Go ahead, then I'll pick the second one. <laughs> okay, well, okay, okay. If, let's say Jessica Alba back in her heyday. Yeah. Fucking okay. Jessica. Uh, Jessica Alba um, on um, Sin City. Yeah, with cowboy okay. stripper. Okay, yes. Jessica Alba on Sin City. Okay, would you rather marry a celebrity crush or have $100 million, but you could never talk to Jessica Alba? $100 million? Because I can buy somebody way harder. <laughs> you can't buy people. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Tell that to other people in Hollywood. This is not human trafficking. If I had $100 million, I would have, a, I don't know, a f- Let's Ferrari. be honest, $100 million, when you think about it, is not like an extraordinary I would amount. live the rest of my life on $100 million. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could also live. The You're rest telling of my life. me a hundred million dollars is not extraordinary. No, amount. I can live the rest of my life on a hundred million dollars too. But there's a lot, a lot of people that have more than that. Okay. You could buy. You could buy a lot with a hundred million dollars, but it would run out eventually if you don't do anything else. Mm-mm. I mean, I'm gonna do stuff with them. I'm gonna put it in Bitcoin and bullshit like that. Fucking don't do fucking Bitcoin. Bitcoin's stupid. It went from five thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars in two years. That shit doesn't work. It makes you money. Does it though? Yeah, it does. Um, anyway, yeah, I'd put it in stocks. That's how people stay rich. Once you're rich, you f- hire somebody that knows what the fuck they're doing, and then you stay rich by putting it in certain different things. So, yeah, fuck Jessica Alba. Even back in Sin City days, I could be like, "Here's two hundred thousand dollars. Sleep with my ugly ass." She'd be like, "Okay." So, yeah, for sure. No, you can't. You can't even talk to her though. So, oh, I can't talk to her. That's right. No, you can't even talk to her. I'll find somebody way harder. There's way harder people than Jessica Alba. Um, anyway, yeah, I picked $100 million. So, you're welcome. My celebrity crush is... Okay. My celebrity crush is either Jennifer Aniston or... or uh, even though she's 56? She's like 50... I don't know. How, how, old is, how old is she? I don't think it matters. She's pushing 50s. Or she's she, above 50. She's over 50. Uh, which she was just in that uh, that new movie called Murder Mystery with Adam Sandler, which I haven't seen yet. Have you seen it? No. I want to watch it. I just haven't got around. It looks pretty good. Um, Tracy says she's seen it. It was pretty good. She said it was really funny, but it just wasn't her thing. It just wasn't for her, which Tracy's... Whatever. Better. Nobody cares. But So Jennifer Aniston, she is... Just go to her bio, dog. Yeah. God, your, your Google's horrible. She's five five. She's born in. We don't need to know her fucking height. She's only. She's, she's, she's only, only fi- worth two hundred. She's only worth two hundred million dollars. She's fifty. She's fifty. Okay, and she's only worth two hundred million dollars. Okay, a hundred million dollars. I would have a hundred. Okay, okay. No, that's her net worth though. That's how much she's. That's how much. I she's, would have a hundred million cash. Okay, that's, she owns that in stocks and shit, and like as cars and houses. I would have that cash in my hand. So she married Brad Pitt. In 2000, 2000, 2005, I didn't know that. Yeah. Justin Thoreau, who's that? Her her first spouse was Justin Thoreau from 2015 to 2017. I don't know. How'd we get on this? Who's Justin Thoreau? I don't know. We're going down the rabbit hole now. Who cares? Um. Anyway, let's get into some news topics. <laughs> oh, excuse sake. me. Sorry. Uh, God, cover your mouth. Sorry, I sneezed. Uh, ooh, Justin Thoreau. Okay. I see why she married him. Okay, he's old as shit now. Yes, because she's also old. That dude's eyebrows are perfect. Justin Thoreau, your eyebrows are perfect. No, they're not. Look at that beard. They look like caterpillars. Brad Pitt looks like a Frenchman. All right, get off of it. Okay, okay. But, uh, all right, so that's Ryan's Would You Rather. Uh, let's get to some nudes topics here, guys. Why you turn your camera on? 
<laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I got one. I want to start. Okay. Um, so, we found an asteroid. For years. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> There's an asteroid. They found, they've known about this asteroid for years. Um, it is worth 700 quintillion dollars. I seen an article about that earlier. And... Uh, heavy metals and precious heavy metals. Um, they call it Psych 16. It's just an asteroid that travels around the Earth. Um, well, it travels in, you know, the solar system. And they, and they said they'd known about it for years, but it has all these precious metals, uh, like gold. It has, I mean, the whole thing is made of precious metals. Really? Yeah, just mass quantities of gold, iron, nickel. Um, and they said that it's crazy, and now they're talking about mining it. Which they they're like how in the fuck are they gonna mine? They're asteroid? like oh well let's let's go mine it and then they just start laying down all this stuff. Well, it they thought about like doing that to the moon, you know the stuff that controls the ocean right and the world yeah um and it controls it controls the gravitational pull but you of can't Earth. mine something on the moon because it has one six of Earth's gravity. You would just float. Everything would float. So how do they think they can mine this asteroid then if it doesn't? They they're it, going there in twenty twenty. So does it have the same gravity as us then? That's what they're going to find out. They're going there. said NASA has, like, everybody knows about it. And uh, the U.S. is trying to be the first people there. But NASA is planning on going there in 20, 2022. Um, so so I seen something, uh, a news article about that earlier. And it said that it can make everybody in the world a billionaire. Yeah, it's uh, it makes everybody. Well, it makes them millionaires. They can get their, uh, everybody in the world They'll have enough money if they mine all this and destroy this asteroid, which is impossible. They can't do it. But if they took all the the precious heavy metals in this asteroid, everybody in the planet would be almost a billionaire. Which nobody, nobody, no, we would not get any of that. Right, that would be one fucking person. No, you wouldn't know. get it. But they're just saying there's there's seven hundred quintillion dollars. Well, I would like some of it. I live on this earth. I think I'm entitled to an asteroid that circulates it. Yeah, but, I mean, it's crazy because they're just talking about... They start talking, oh, well, what... Of course, you're like, well, what if we could mine it? And then they just start going on this all this bullshit about how, you know, we don't know because the moon's the same way, but it has less gravity, so it's impossible because the minute you stick something in the ground, you fucking fly away, and then you're lost in space. Right. So that's why they're going there in 2022 to find out. So this thing's traveling, and they're just going to fly ship and land on it. Is see. Elon Musk heading this? No, it's NASA. Okay. <laughs> so we'll never make it there. We'll never make it there. Um, so I thought that was interesting um, and how you know crazy it was. And the, even to even think that they would even do that to the moon is crazy. Like, that controls everything. Um, you know, the tides and... The way the weather and all that stuff, it all it, the moon has all kinds of stuff to do with that. So that's my shared news topic. I got a couple more, but I'll let you go ahead and do some of yours. All right, I got uh, got got the news topic this week, guys. A uh, a French inventor is selling pills that make farts smell good. It's about fucking time. Yeah, no shit, especially me today. I farted twice. Uh, this early this morning while me and Tracy were asleep because she stayed the night at my house uh, last night. So I farted twice and she woke up and that is all she smelled. She said, do you just, does this smell, does this room just smell fucking terrible because all you do is fart at night? While she was sucking her thumb? No, 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 while she was sucking her thumb. <laughs> yeah, that was from last episode, guys, that picture of her. I, uh, Did we share that? Huh? Did we share? Yeah, that? we did. So we we I mentioned it because I, the picture came up when you and Sam Bob were here. I didn't know if we were on the episode or not. Yeah, we were on we were on the episode. Okay, but uh, uh, but so this French company claims to have uh, invented a pill that can make your farts smell good. Uh, the pill has been developed by the inventor uh, Christian uh, Point Point Pointeville Pointeville. It doesn't who, really matter. Okay, who is based in the western. French town as of uh doesn't matter where it's from either. Guess Frizz. Guess Frizz, okay. I don't speak French. But uh and uh, he claims that they can transfer your smelly gas into lovely fragrance of chocolate or roses. So you can actually fart roses. Yeah, you can fart the smell of chocolate or roses. There's a fucking guy at work that always says that. It's like, 
And somebody's like, oh, who farted? And he's like, well, if it smells like roses, it's mine. And I was like, no, if it smells like shit, it's yours. Yeah. Fucking idiot. I he know. I, says is that. that the older dude? Yeah. He, yeah always, he, looks, he always says it. He looks like a fucking homeless uh, man. He looks like he touches kids, too. So, But, uh, so, uh, he's been doing this research since 2007. Uh, the inspiration came from a, uh, a dinner that he went to. Where he was just farting up a fucking yeah, yeah. store. He said, he said, uh, <laughs> he said... Because they, um, uh, it 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 was so smelly that it nearly suffocated us. He said well, it was quit that fu- shit in you fucking he old said man. It was that fucking bad. Jesus Christ! Look at him. Did his uh? Yeah, the product called uh, Luton Luton, Luton Mollin. Luton Mollin. <laughs> that sounds like a fish. Luton Mollin. Yeah, that sounds like a. Fi- that, that literally people, sounds like a fish. This is people who wanted you know the flatulence to smell like ginger. Uh, seasonal choices as well, like Christmas uh, chocolate and stuff like that. Christmas chocolate and May Day Lily. So they have seasonal choices. It's the Bath and Body Works of assholes. Yeah. Uh, basically, something fa- about even doing it with your dog. Right. It says something. They made something with a dog. Oh, it's a farts. powder. It's a powder yeah, for yeah, your a, dog. Yeah. So it's but it's all a powder. So basically, you sprinkle it on your food before you eat it, and your farts smell nice. And it says they have a bunch of returning customers. So I've also I no. also thought about looking it up on Amazon to see if it's actually a fucking I don't know thing. if I'd buy it though. Like I'd want somebody to study it like if it's bad for your gut or something like that. Or if he it said makes- uh, apparently it's all natural. Apparently it's all natural ingredients, no uh well cyanide's all natural. And people die. It is? No, it's fucking not. Well they have fucking berries that are on plants that grow out of the fucking ground and you eat them and you die. So that's it. That's an inedible, an inedible uh, plant, though. I have and books. I've googled it on Amazon, and it ain't, it ain't fucking, it ain't on here. It just pops up books. Yeah, it just pops up books. But uh, the inventor, the scientist who invented it, he looks like an Irish Santa Claus, but he's French. He looks like he looks like a guy I've seen at Bonnaroo. Yeah, legit. He looks like he looks like a hippie Santa Claus, and uh, in the commercial. Uh, the Luton Mall and commercial, he's riding down on a, uh, a green rainbow. Uh, it looks more like a plant leaf. Uh, it might be. But, uh, yeah, I think it is a plant leaf. So, uh... Because it, since it's all a natural. Well, when you, when you eat escargot all fucking day... Yeah. Which is snails, by the way. Uh, when you eat that all fucking day, your shit has to smell terrible. Yeah. To be honest with you. Uh, Luton Mall. Uh, I I'm looking for an actual. Uh, I don't I, think you'll be able to get it unless I don't somebody think so. ships it. So it has it has the picture of him on here. Yeah. Well, he's obviously made it. So and, and it's just, obviously a thing in France, but I don't think I don't think they would sell it in the U.S. To be honest with you, you. mean in France? Yeah, in in France because I don't think they would honestly sell it in the U.S. I don't know. Oh, well, I guess it has it right here. Luton Mall on the official site. And it's uh, less than 20 euros. I don't know how how much... Um, I don't, I'm not sure how much 20 euros hit, is. Hit more. more well, I'll, just, I'll just Google how much uh, 20 euros is. Well, yeah, it is hit more. You could probably change the currency on it. That's what I mean. Like, on their website. It's 20 euros to dollars is 22, 22 So roughly $23. So roughly $23. And then uh, to get it here would be another $30. Oh, probably. The shipping and handling from France is probably fucking ridiculous. But then yeah. again, I was looking for a, a Nintendo 64 game on eBay, and, uh, which is uh, Gauntlet Legends, which is, any, if anybody's played that, it's my favorite Nintendo game. But uh, What happened looking, to it? I still have it. Then why are we looking at it? Huh? Why were you looking for it? I had to buy it. I had to buy it. Uh, I had to buy it because uh, it got sold. Oh. Um, Because our stepmom, who's a terrible person, uh, sold all our Nintendo games. Oh. Uh, So, yeah, I was looking on eBay for Gauntlet Legends, and I found it on eBay, and it was a direct thing from China, a copy from China, and it was like 10 bucks. But they had to send it from China, so it took about a month to get there. It took forever. Oh. All right, so the next one, I got another one. This this is my last one that I have since this is, we've talked about beer pretty much this whole episode with college and you've been drinking this whole time. Um, so in a German town, it's or treats Germany, and they, the people of the town weren't happy because, you know, you can't stop 
rallies and such of that nature because as long as it's peaceful, then you can have them. Well, it turns out that they were having a neo-Nazi rally in this town in Germany, and people weren't too happy with it. So the town, oh, fuck no. So the town decided to band together and buy out all of the grocery stores and liquor stores beer. So the police have had their hands full because they've been in this town so far. I guess the year before they had like 1,200 people and had like all these arrests. And I mean, they're neo-Nazis, so it's like mosh pits and they all beat the fuck out of each other. Um, and I guess they caused a lot of trouble. So to calm that down, the police like raised all this money and tried to buy as much beer out of the grocery stores as they could. I mean, they have trailers, weir barrels of just racks and cases of beer that they bought out so these people couldn't buy it and drink it and get rowdy. So good. Once they, once the people found out about this, they also, uh, started going. And I mean, it has pictures like l- this lady just has a shopping cart full of cases of beer uh-huh. and they're uh, upset. Um, and they said, you know, we don't want them in our town and maybe to keep them down and less rowdy. We're just going to buy up all the beer. So uh, the police ended up buying 200 crates of beer from the grocery stores. And also another 600 people flocked to go buy out these stores worth of beer a week ahead of time. So they couldn't get fully stocked back up by the time these people got into town. Um, And it ended up a good thing where the the neo-Nazi party ended, ended up being only like a couple hundred people. Not 1,200 like they've had. So it was less and they only had like a couple of arrests. So uh, shout out to this town. Uh, or what was it again? Um, in Germany. Uh, Ostreets. Ostreets, Germany. For uh, keeping these neo-Nazi fucks um, from getting hammered and causing trouble in your little quiet German town. So shout out to you uh, guys. Congratulations. Well yeah. done. Fucking neo-Nazis. Um, <clears throat> that's crazy. Like they, the whole town just a fucking band together and we're like, we're going to buy all this beer. Right. And like, well, they're having, you know, some shit party with no alcohol. We're getting fucked up at home. Right. And I mean, the police probably like just threw it away, honestly. Yeah. I don't know. But you just see all these cases and cases of beer on all these trailers. And you know shit. what? You know what I forgot? Um, this is technically the 4th of July episode. Technically it would be because 4th of July is yeah, Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday. So. so so, uh, if all you are listening to this, we hope that you, we hope you have a good Fourth of July. Happy Independence Day to everyone. Yeah. Maybe Will Smith will punch Alien in the face this year. Yeah, yeah. Happy Independence Day. Um, so uh, one last one last news story, and then we'll close it out here. Um, so users discovered uh, what appears to be a half submerged red and white plane off the ocean pier. Off the ocean, oh, fuck, you can see it. Yeah, Ocean Beach Pier in San Diego. The Malaysian plane. Um, while some speculated about it being a government conspiracy or some sort of Eastern egg. Eastern egg? Easter egg. Oh, Easter egg. You know how that, like, they would put, like, little... That, that comes from video games. Like, they'd put, oh, like, yeah. little ketchup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they'd put, like, like, a chocolate bar under this bush or something yeah, like yeah. that. Okay, so basically the thing, what happened was it was just a blip. So you see the fishers landing. That's the pier that walks out into the ocean. And there's the plane. You figured somebody could see that. Not, not unless you're a sky view. Yeah, you could. But um. So basically what had happened was it was a glitch in the system. Um, what, well, it took a picture of a plane flying? It took a picture of a plane flying just over the ocean right by the Fisher's Landing. That's fucking cool. Probably, probably, a, probably, it's thousands of feet above the Fisher's Landing pier and above the ocean right over the shore. Yeah. So it basically a glitch and it got half of the plane like it was, like it was submerged in the sand. So it technically is an Easter egg. Technically, yeah. Technically, yeah. But it was a bl- glitch in the system. So a plane was flying over and it basically blended that image into the ocean. That's cool. Yeah. Because the plane's flying like 200 miles an hour if you take a picture of it. Right. That's like Google Maps. If you do like Google Maps and then you go down to the ground view, um, it shows people. what You can see people like in their like matrix pixelation behind them where they're moving. Sometimes if you catch a good one, you can see them like walking and you can see their... Like shadow right, right, faded yeah. Yeah. stuff behind them. So that's basically what that is. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's that's the last news story I have this week, guys. So I will uh, we will go ahead and close this episode out. Uh, once again, we appreciate everybody that listens to this episode. Um, 
And sorry we didn't really, I, I completely forgot that it was, this is our Independence Day episode, uh, just because uh, it's it's another, you know, like five days away, and I forgot that we record this at the end of the week. That's so, all right. So happy Independence Day, everybody, if you're listening to this, uh, whenever you listen to it this week. Uh, the episodes come out on Mondays, midday. Uh, so happy Independence Day. Thank you to our veterans. Uh, we love and support you all. Thank you so much for the freedom we have. Um, so have a happy 4th of July, everybody. Um, have a great time with your families. Have a good day off if you have the day off. I know I, I know we do. Um, unfortunately, Tracy does not. Uh, her job requires her to work one major holiday. Um, and they picked uh, this yeah, one? Yeah. Well, she, she recently... <laughs> oh, she picked this one? Well, she, she, she's only been there for about a month. Ah. So she, unfortunately, has everybody to Everybody cancels off, so yeah. she has to come in. So unfortunately, she has to work, so... Um, It'll be a lonely one for me, but uh, but everybody. For me, I'd pick New Year's because yeah. New Year's is bleh. right. But everybody have a great Fourth of July. Uh, thank you for the veterans out there who serve. Um, we love you guys. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, just tell your friends. Tell anybody if you want to email. Email us at thecomcast at gmail uh, My Instagram is at Cody Cummings Official, and Ryan's Instagram is at come c u m m double o seven Ryan. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys so much. We love you. Thanks for listening. Yeah. We'll get you guys next episode. Have and a great Fourth of July. And again, guys, we're uh, you know uh, make sure to tell a friend um, if you like this bullshit show and you like what we're doing. Uh, make sure and tell somebody about it. Let them know that these stupid fat fucks get on here and talk about nonsense and bullshit about their daily lives. Uh, just let somebody know if you got an email. Email us. And uh, we're everywhere. You know, we're Android, Apple, um, iHeart. Uh, Spotify, so if you want to listen to us anywhere else, you can. Um, But that is the episode 11 of the Comcast. Thanks for listening. We're out. Peace. And remember, guys, when life gets down, milk that pig. Yee-yee.